were just uh, looking at this part. This was the evidencing your mastery because it was the mastery that is established. You were invited evidencing the mastery and here you have speculating about the mastery. Sorry, I haven't given the technical people a sign, so just jumped in. Is it okay? Good. Um, here, this is something that you'll probably not be able to read from the, uh, here from the screen because it's not a large projection, so I invite you to go into uh, uh, the handout. Uh, and what I'm, what I'm, if I had to explain this to people and say, what is this model actually about? and what is its basic nature, uh, there are mm, two things that uh, I want you to look at. First of all, because being a manifesto, this has a branding na nature, but uh, number two says something interesting, I think, for you. The model's prime aim, well, what's the prime aim? Is to release the sealed cognitive research capital in creative practice of venturous practitioners with an established mastery in the field. That's again the resurface of the mastery topic. The basic premise of design practice research is to make explicit, hacer explicito lo que estaba implicito, and voice research knowledge which is per default implicit and tacit in ongoing practice. So there you get the very idea from the implicit to the explicit and give people this uh, terrain. So that's about that we can, uh, in the colloquium, discuss how this is related to few uh, <coughs> other models that RMIT conducts unbelievably su successfully, namely embedded research, where you send out young practitioners into industry, which uh, is sort of almost a complementary program to this, because this is about established people out there that reconnect with the academy. So uh, there is an interesting uh, um, discussion point for those who are interested in embedded research. Uh, and the last point that I will make before I start to introduce uh, the uh, three presentations is in this box down here, and it is actually about the last entry in it, namely that uh, we hope and the aspiration is that this type of research is transformational. Uh, of course, that sounds again like a throwaway remark um, uh, that's all, uh, always there, but what, we, what do we mean by it? We mean precisely that the venturous practice, and by venturous, yeah, what does that mean? Uh, in our terms, it means uh, to venture into uncharted territory. That's where we see it's not simply a commercial practice, but it is a practice that is something about it where the practitioner feels I'm actually somehow seeking out something that has perhaps not been uh, sought uh, for before. I'm touching upon things that are of relevance, et cetera, that sort of thing. So it's into uncharted territory. There is a connotation about risk-taking also in ventures, um, but very often it's not necessarily that uh, simply because you go into uncharted territory there is risk. There's sometimes only sheer curiosity. There is joy. It's not always... Um, a depressive scenario. Okay, the, the, but the idea is venturous practice, and out of it comes the venturous practice is through what we do at RMIT, uh, and mm, perhaps you are interested in doing it uh, to some degree in your in UPC at UPC as well. Is to turn that into a research laboratory. So the practice was already there. Now through the you will see how they switched into research mode and what it meant to move from research, from practice into research. So that's the transformation. The, the, the practice becomes a research laboratory at the same time. Okay? And the, so that's the one transformational direction. And you might say on the other side, there is also a transformation, as I just said, that the real world action space, these practices that are out there, become in a way part of a research scenario that uh, links back to the academy. So in terms of the idea of the universities and their relevance to uh, the out, outer uh, space in, in terms of uh, outside academia, uh, their relationship to industry, etc., there is this double transformational uh, extraordinary impact that this type of research has. So far about uh, these slides, um, this is just offerings for later so that you know 
behind this model then sits a very um, detailed and quite sophisticated research, uh, research methodology where there are when we do research methods, there are all sorts of topics here. Then there is a skills uh, whole list of what we skill them up with. Uh, we don't have to go into any details here. It's simply to let you know behind it sits a very refined and after 25, 26, 27 years, uh, quite matured way to lead um, uh, people through this. What we'll see in uh, our presentations uh, now is that uh, these practitioners, who three of them, who started with a body of work, went into this PhD mode, which was their, their research mode. It's still practice, as you can see. Then they produce um, something which is part of the dissertation, which they need to uh, submit to examiners. And then at the end of the entire process, there is a presentation which uh, is part of the whole research exercise. So we can talk about the whole model in detail later. Now I introduce the three speakers because they all went through this very process. <coughs> These little signals here are almost pipettes because it is about pipetting out issues of relevance. Uh, and I've asked them and briefed them uh, to now, after they've done their uh, successful PhDs and they are all a doctors of philosophy now, to actually uh, pipette out for you a few things of relevance that speak into an audience that is interested in what is this model about. The first